Hi, today we're going to talk about allocations and feasible sets. So we're going to use an example from the core economics project. The example is Bruno and Angela. Bruno is a landowner and a slave owner, and he owns Angela as a slave. And he forces Angela to work his land. So here is a feasible set. It has a feasible frontier, which is the blue line, which shows what is technically possible to produce given the amount of hours that Angela works his land. But Angela is constrained by her biological survival constraint curve, which is the amount of food she needs to survive. So Bruno can't just decide to not give her anything because she will starve to death. So he has to give the minimum amount of food for her to survive uh, working his land. But the more hours she works, the more calories she's going to burn and the more food she needs. So over here is the bushels of grain and on the x-axis is Angela's hours of free time. So to find the optimal point for Bruno you need to look at the slope of the tangents to the two curves. You need to find the point for which the slope of the tangents are equal. Basically that means when the marginal rate of transformation equals the marginal rate of substitution. The right marginal rate of transformation is the slope of the feasible frontier. It's the transformation of grain into free time. The marginal rate of substitution is how Angela or Bruno can substitute grain and free time. So, here you can see a graph of uh, what Bruno gets. And you can see the biggest gap between what Angela gets and the total production, for which is 10 bushels of grain here, Angela gets 4, that is the biggest um, amount Bruno can obtain. If Angela works more hours, she's going to need more food and produce a bit more, but the surplus to Bruno is going to be smaller. Likewise, if she works less hours. So the optimal point is to make Angela work 11 hours per day, for which she obtains four bushels of grain that she can eat and to survive, and Bruno obtains six bushels of grain. Now we're going to look at an example for which Angela is no longer a slave and Bruno cannot force her to work for him. So there are legal institutions in place and the best Bruno can do now is to make Angela a take it or leave it offer. And that's what we're going to look at now. So now the biological survival constraint does no longer apply because Angela can say no to working for him. So the purple curve is Angela's reservation indifference curve. It meets the biological survival constraint at 24 hours of free time. So if she's not working, she would still receive uh, government rationing. Otherwise, she would not survive. But the more hours of work, she needs to be compensated more than just um, the food she needs to survive because of the effort that she puts into the work. So, now, the most optimal point for Angela to work is 8 hours a day, which is where the slope of the feasible frontier, the MRT, equals the slope of the reservation indifference curve, so where MRT equals MRS. And we can see that now Bruno gets only 4.5 bushels, whereas when he could force her to work, he, work, he could get 6 bushels. So this is what Bruno gets and this is what Angela gets. And now Angela gets four and a half compared to four bushels, but she also has three hours more of free time. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below.